Hello, mountain biking ladies. What is up? Liz here from The Ride Life. I hope y'all are having a fantastic night. Tonight we are going to be talking about our knees and how sometimes they can feel pretty weak and just dysfunctional. You can have some pain in them. You can have some just kind of lack of trust that you don't you don't want to push it anymore. So it's kind of, one of the main things that we're going to go over tonight are one, why this feeling can happen, what causes it, what, what things make this potentially happen, and then two, one, some things that may be, that you may be able to do to help it. So some different muscle groups that you can do, and then also, last thing that we're going to cover are some things to think about for the bike. One, positioning on the bike, and then two, some bike fit issues that can happen for it. There's been so many questions about knee issues in the big Facebook group, the Mountain Biking Ladies Facebook group, that I thought it would be good to do kind of a two-part series on this. So this is part one of it, where I'm kind of going over the basics of it, and then part two, I'm going to go over a couple different exercises to help focus, focus you in on how to support your knees, how to support your body, specifically around your knees, for it. Who here has ever felt like weakness in their knees? I know I have in the past. It's not fun. It makes you a little bit nervous. I know several ladies have switched over from running to mountain biking because of knee issues and they couldn't continue to run from it. And so they started mountain biking to help it. This is, it's really super common when I'm adding ladies to the group that that's one of the things because I ask, what do you love about mountain biking? And a lot of them will be like, I just switched over from, from uh, running to mountain biking because of it. So I'm so excited about going over some of this. So if anybody has this or if you're on here live or catching the replay, I'd love to know that you stopped by just so it makes me feel better about things that are actually, I'm doing something and someone's listening. <laughs> I know that sounds so silly, but so why do your knees feel weak? What can cause it? There's so many things in our actual knee joint that can cause pain, that can cause discomfort, but the basic point of our knee is that it's a hinge joint. Just like our elbow, it's a hinge joint. Well, hinges, as you think about them like doors, so we look back to my closet door over here, they don't like to get kinked, do they? They don't like to be off kilter. They like to be stable, supported, and just move through that hinge action. The frame needs to be good that you have around it, and your wall needs to be set for it. It doesn't like to have other things that it scrapes up against. And so as we look at our knees on the bike, we're doing a lot of repetitive movements here. We are going back and forth, circling around, pushing that pedal down and around, and we're doing that again and again and again and again and again and so on and so forth. Different sorts of resistance within that. If you have any type of interjoint issue in your knee, then putting more pressure on it making it work harder, aka an increased resistance of your pedal stroke, is going to put more pressure into that. Or if you have where your hinge is not being straight, it's getting kinked, then it also can potentially cause you pain with it, right? Makes sense. If you have pain in your knee joint, then that sends signals around the knee to the muscles from your brain because our brain says, I want to protect things. I don't want to cause more injury. It actually decreases your max output for the muscles around it. It makes them not work quite as well. And so when we have knee pain, we appear weaker because our brain says, I need to protect my knee and I don't need to use it as much. That means our quad is not going to work as much. That means other things around our knee is not, are not going to work as well. It's not going to be as strong. And so that can make you have that feeling of like almost giving out or that, you're, that your knees are weak, that you, you don't trust them. You're, you go to step up on it, you're walking and you're just like, mm. things, things don't seem correct here. And so one of these things is if you have an inter-knee issue, go get it checked out. Seek care to see if you, if you need something else to help with it. Do you need more PT actually? Or do you need to just support how you're riding on your bike? And that's going to help a lot with everything else. 
making sure we're not kinking it and kind of pinching other structures. We don't actually have something anatomically wrong, but if we do something that's not quite helpful for something, then we can make something come about. And so this is kind of like a preceptor to what can be happening. We can damage some things with that. Now, as we talk about support and making sure we don't kink, this is how we come into some of the muscles that help it. And also how some of the reasons why on the bike we need to make some changes. So I'm going to lower this down so you can see me and my knee a little bit better. So as we think about our knees, our hinge joints through here, we want to make sure that they're able to move as that hinge. Our base of support is super important for this, our foot. That making sure that we don't sag in too much and our knees go in and that we're not so far out that we lose our base of support and that we have to balance so much. Now, knees going out are always better than knees going in. Knees going out, knees going in. We always want to bias towards going out with our knees because our feet can still give the correct angle to make our, our knee hinges work as a good hinge. If we go inward, we tend to kink because our hips can't follow that as much. And so it's always better to bias towards going out or a good way to remember this is cowboy knees are always better. Because you're riding a horse. Cowboy? Anybody? Hope I get a laugh from somebody. And so how we make sure that we have that is one, a good base of support. Our shoes, our footwear, having a good arch support inside of our shoes is super important for that. Making sure that we're not losing and collapsing our arch through that is also super important. And also what muscles help us with driving our knees out? Anybody know? Anybody know what muscles help with bringing our knees outwards versus inwards? One of the inwards ones are our inner thighs here. That's also one reason why it's not good to grip onto your seat whenever you're going downhill. We want the bike to move underneath of us. Our glutes, these guys, our butt muscles, they help a ton with bringing our knees outward. The external rotation of our glute max and the abduction of our glute med in men. And so those include all of our glute muscles. Well, what makes our glute muscles work better? Our core, our core strength, able, our ability to hold this nice and still and stable. If you don't know, I am 26 weeks pregnant tomorrow. So if you see my nice pregnant, pregnant belly, that's how far along I am. <laughs> and so our ability to use our glutes stems from the use of our trunk control, our core. And so as we think about supporting our, our knees more, we need to increase strength and also body control of understanding how to use it. I can increase my strength in my glutes all the way along, but if I don't actually apply it to my bike, if I don't actually apply it to how I'm using it in some of my exercises, I'm probably not going to feel the biggest difference in it because I'm just going to use my old motor patterns and I'm going to still kink my hinge as I'm riding my bike or doing other activities. Is that making sense to everybody? Um, Allison says that she has some knee issues uh, and that's the reason why she started biking from running. Yep. So, so many ladies are like that because naturally we're more quad dominant. We naturally stress our knees more so then use our hips. And as we use our hips more and our knees follow along afterwards, then we actually take stress off of our knees and support them with the use of our glutes and our core and get them to go outwards, right? Hope that makes sense for that. That's why it's so important. I'm putting on my shoes right now so I can hop on the bike. That's why it's so important to have good glute strength and not just have exercises that focus in on your quads all the time. Most workout programs, they unfortunately are so quad dominant. They don't get your glutes and your core quite as well. And we need more of that in some of our extra exercises that we do even to help us with riding the bike. That's our extra bit. Also, many ladies have issues with turning on their glutes. They are just told, just squeeze, squeeze your glutes together. Well, I don't know about you. I'm not gonna ride my bike pinching a penny in between my ass cheeks. It's just not gonna happen. And so it's not practical to do your exercises 
pinching that penny between your butt cheeks because I'm not going to be able to apply it. Also, for the bike, I need one side to work comparatively to the other side. And so I need to make sure that my training relates back to that. And this is, we're going to go over exercises in part two of this to make sure you guys have something tangible to help you because I want you, I want you to have something that goes along with that. But just for food for thought for you until, and I think it'll be two weeks because next week we're doing a team talk. The Ride Life team is doing a team talk about, about self-confidence and self-worth, which I'm super stoked about. So I'm going to be busy with that. Um, Marcy says, if I'm climbing uphill and knees start to hurt, is that a sign that I should take a break from riding? Not necessarily. I actually don't like people to take breaks from riding as a whole, hardly ever, um, unless they really need to. And Marcy, listen to the next couple things. It could be a sign that you need more glute strength, more core strength. It's usually what that means, but also that you need to be changing some things about how you're riding. One, I love flat pedals for people. So we're going to start again, base up. I love fat pedals for people that have knee issues because you can move your foot around on the pedal. So if you ever tried to do a squat and you're more on your toes, if you haven't and you're able to stand up right now, stand up, do a squat where you're more on your toes. And now do a squat where you're more on your heels. You probably notice that if you do a squat where you're more on your toes, you get more quad working. If you do a squat where you're more on your heels, you get more of your glutes working with it, more of that posture chain. Yes, you still get your quads because you need your quads for your squat. And so on the bike, if you have clip-ins, then more of the front part of your foot is going to be attached to the pedal or the clip. If you are on flats, you can move your foot more forward actually on the pedal. And so you can actually push more with midfoot to heel than midfoot to toes, making it more applicable for you to use hamstring glutes as you're climbing up. It'll also make it more applicable for you instead of just pressing that pedal down as just a knee straightening that you're starting to, to dig and actually swipe off the bottom of your foot to get that hamstring pull at the end of that, the bottom of that pedal stroke. That'll also help you use more other muscles besides just your quad. As we think about our body, we want to move efficiently. We want to use our muscles that we have. If I'm mainly using my quads, I'm losing so much efficiency and so much energy because I have a, I have a hamstring muscle. It's a muscle on the back side of my thigh. I have a glute muscle. I have my core. All these things can help me with climbing the hill, right? It's always better if I use it. And then I can combine all the efforts to help me get up the hill versus just mainly in my quads to help me with that. Okay, and so moving your foot forward on the pedal can help that a ton. Now, as we talk about bike fit, making sure that you have a proper knee bend in that. You don't wanna be reaching for your pedal, and if you find that you're moving your heel more so towards the middle of the pedal, then you might need to lower your seat a bit because you won't be able to use your toes as much. Also, making sure that you're not too low within it where you're actually putting more stress on your knees for that and that you're not too high where you're almost kind of like falling over <laughs> oh my gosh where you're almost reaching for the paddle <laughs> as you are as you're pedaling and so you're shifting that butt back and forth and almost doing like kind of a butt wiggle on the seat which can also lead to more saddle sores and more saddle issues and vagina kind of labia numbness and other things like that that we don't want to have happen. And so saddle height. The other thing that I want you to pay attention is seat forward and back. The more forward your seat is for your reach, the more that you're going to be more quad dominant through that. Because again, it biases you more towards your toes for the pressure on the pedals. If your seat is a little bit farther back, it biases you a little bit more towards the posture chain because you can get more of that pull. Now, there's a sweet spot in that. It's not that I want you all the way back with your saddle that you possibly can go. No, 
we need everything to kind of be in this lovely gray zone, but it's something definitely to look at. Also note, if you move your saddle forward or back, that you might need to change the height of it. You probably will within that. Um, another thing that can help people with climbing is they sometimes shift their butt forward on the saddle for climbing. That does make you a little bit more biased towards your quads. So if you have knee issues going on, you probably don't want to do that because that'll make you stress your knees more. As we go pedaling, I'm just gonna go backwards here, because I can. We wanna make sure that we're not diving our knee inwards as we're going through the stroke. That I'm not rocking in and losing my arch with my foot, or that I'm not trying to draw in and use my inner thighs. One way of knowing this is, do you get tightness in your, in your groin area after you ride? Do you find that that part gets sore? Or another great thing that you can do that I love to have people do is you actually zip tie on the top tube of your frame a piece of a foam noodle or an insulation piece that covers up some of the water pipes downstairs in like your basement or your, your under your house. And you actually zip tie that on top, onto your top tube. That way, as you're going around with your knees, obviously I would be forward pedaling, not backwards, do you hit that? Or are your knees staying out away from it? This is a cue for you to know what's happening to your knees and what's going on. And is that, am I going around and hitting that guy or not? And so the three main things, one, foot position, saddle position on this, and then are you utilizing the right muscle groups to help you with this? Are you drawing in with your knees? Are you able to use your glutes and your core and your hamstrings to help you with climbing on your bike more so? Some people can get knee pain with going downhill. It's a little bit, it's same thing, but we wanna make sure that we're not gripping in with our, with our knees as we are going downhill, that we have those nice cowboy knees as we go and making sure that we have good support for that. All of these things combine to help you with decreasing that stress that kinking that can happen on your bike as you're riding. Does this make sense to everybody? Is anybody going to change how they're riding or going to look at some of their bike fit stuff after this? I'd love to know. Put in the comments below. Let me know. These things can change. Like you can feel better in certain positions than others. And you can help support yourself for that. In two weeks, we're going to be talking about some exercises that you can do. We're going to be going back over some of the some of the main muscle groups that we want to target to help support our knees for that. But this should help you with some things you can actually, can actually do on the bike that you can change where your foot is through that, and you can change your fit for it, and how you can like really dig and draw that pedal backwards based on where your butt is and how you're engaging through that. I hope this was super helpful for y'all. All right, y'all have a fantastic night and I'll look forward to part two.